Hello and welcome again to another Bible study, another Bible lesson at Jehovah Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, we first want to start off in wishing all the brothers, all the men, all the fathers, happy Father's Day. Uh, it's a tradition here at Jehovah uh, during the month of June that the men um, serve. Uh, we serve in all capacities. So brothers, I, I pray that you have been serving. I pray that you have been encouraged and you have been excited in what you have seen during the month of June. I know the sisters did an excellent job in the month of May, but brothers, it's our time to stand up and exalt the Savior in the month of June. And again, happy Father's Day. Uh, in our um, last couple of months, we've been studying in the life of Abraham. Uh, our June emphasis uh, continues with kingdom citizens finding victory in the midst of challenges, Abraham's journey. Our thought for the month of June is the journey of faith is not achieved in private nor with ease. The book of Hebrews puts it this way, and without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. There is never a time when the man or woman or God can afford to be faithless. That's our thought for the month of June. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you again for this day. Thank you for your many blessings, and thank you for just another time, another opportunity to open your book of life. We pray for your power and your presence to be here with us as we uh, discuss your word um, and open your book of life. Uh, forgive us of all our sins and all our shortcomings and continue to just bless the men and continue to let them know that they have a special place in your heart. We thank you and we love you in Jesus name. Amen. Uh, some words and some phrases that uh, we have for the month of June. Uh, that we want to keep in mind as we go through the month of June and as we study God's word uh, is intercession, wise instruction, sacrifice, and deliverance. Uh, these are words and phrases uh, for the month of June. When we think about intercession, uh, the act of petitioning God or praying on behalf of another person or group. Uh, have you interceded, uh, brothers, um, for anyone lately. Uh, intercession is extremely important in our lives as we intercede for others, others should be interceding for us, uh, knowing that we're all one body and we have to continue to pray and intercede on the behalf of others. Uh, so let's continue to pray and petition God uh, for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Other words, uh, wise instruction. Uh, when we think about wisdom, uh, you know, we, 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 want, we want to think about uh, we have certain men, uh, certain places in the Bible where we can get wisdom. Uh, you have a spirit, we have a, a, a wise pastor here uh, and wise pastors and wise leaders, leaders. But when we think about the wisdom, the wise instruction, uh, we can think about the first principle of biblical wisdom, of, bi of biblical wisdom, is that man should humble himself before God in reverence and worship, obedience to his command. Uh, we can look at the wisdom literature in the Bible that comes from uh, like the book of Job, uh, book of Psalms, book of Proverbs, and the book of Ecclesiastic. That's the wisdom literature uh, in, the, in the word of God. Uh, but we want to reverence God. We want to worship and be obedient to his commands. That's wise instruction. Uh, another word that we have here is sacrifice. It's the act of giving up something, value, for the sake of something's let me back up. An act of giving up something value for the sake of something else regarded as more important or worthy. Uh, sacrifice. 
we must be all prepared, brothers, to make sacrifices uh, as much as we can. Um, the sacrifices uh, that we definitely should always be willing to take for our family, uh, for our wives. Um, we we got to think about being sacrificial uh, in our giving and in our living uh, sometimes. Sacrifice does make a difference in as we reverence and worship God. And our last word is deliverance. Uh, deliverance is the action of being rescued or set free. Um, when we think about deliverance, have you been bound up, bind up with something that God delivered you from? Act of being rescued or set free. Um, has God rescued you or your family uh, from anything that's been trying to destroy you? Um, trying to take hold of you. God is still in the deliverance business. We just have to turn it all over to him. We have to make sure we turn it all over to God and he will take care of the rest. Okay, this is lesson 25 and it's titled Making Tough Family Decisions. Lesson 25, Making Tough Family Decisions. And we start off with uh, some questions to consider uh, for the month. How often do you consult God before making family decisions? How often do you consult God before making family decisions? Uh, second question is, have you regretted a decision that you made that puts your family at risk? And number three is, how much of your personal desires would you give up to protect your family? How much of your personal desires would you give up to protect your family? Um, I thought about the first one, how often do you consult God before making family decisions? Uh, say, as I have grown, I know how important it is now, but I haven't always uh, consulted God. Um, but since I've been saved and I understand uh, that God will not put us in the wrong direction. He'll keep us on the right path. Um, I've always made sure that me and my wife, and if it involves the children, that we consult God together in making, uh, consult God in making our family decisions. It's so important that we put God first, uh, brothers. So let's, let's, let's make sure that in any family decision now, if you haven't been doing it, if you haven't done it lately, put God first and watch how it will make a difference in your decisions, in your, uh, uh, with your walk with God, because it's a thing of faith. That's what we're looking at. We're looking at faith, faith, faith. So let, let's, let's do that. Consult God before we go down the wrong path. And then the second question comes back. Have you regretted the decision you made that puts your family at risk. Um, yes, uh, you know, you, you, as you live and you learn, uh, we can think about, you can think back when you were maybe not even married. Uh, you were still under your parents' roof and there were certain decisions that you made that were bad decisions. But now that you're grown, you have your own family, uh, there's still decisions that you made that, hey, you got to get past that if they were bad decisions. You got to turn them all over to God and, and let God work on uh, helping you making those things correct now. Uh, not perfect, but we want to live um, not in regret, but live a renewed and refreshed life in knowing that I made bad decisions, but I can be delivered. Uh, by God. He, he can help me out. He can rescue me from these bad decisions that I made. Uh, so let's keep that in mind, brothers. Let's, uh, let's not beat ourselves up so, so much about the bad decisions that we made in the past. How much of your personal desires would you give up to protect your family? 
And I think I've always felt this way, and it would be all uh, your personal desires. Um, <laughs> you, may, <laughs> you may have been selfish in the past, but we pray to God that you're no longer selfish, but you are now concerned about uh, your family, how to protect your family. Your personal desires are still there, but they don't override uh, your family. Uh, they don't take uh, all everything from your family and you're the one that's sitting there getting everything. Uh, we can't be selfish brothers as we um, live this life and think that everything is about us, uh, especially when you become a family man. Now, when you're out there and you're single, um, we still pray and hope that you're not thinking it's all about you. Uh, our personal desires have to be uh, tempered. We have to keep them under control or we'll, it will blow up in our faces. So those personal diets, desires, would you give them up to protect your family? I pray that you have and that you will continue uh, to understand that family was the first institution made by God. So he is concerned about the men that he have in charge of families that said they are godly families and they are worshiping him in spirit and truth. Let's make those sacrifices uh, to protect our family. All right, we pray that um, we are understanding at this point how faithful this patriarch Abraham has been. Uh, now the man without fault or problems, uh, but Abraham lived a faithful life. We're coming to our text, which is Genesis 20, verses 8 through 18. And let me read that for your hearing. So Amalek rose early in the morning, called all to service, and told all these things in their hearings. And the men were very much afraid. And Amalek called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I offended you that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me, to me that ought not to be done. The Amalek said to Abraham, what did you have in view that you have done this thing? And Abraham said, because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place and they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed, she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass when God calls me to wander from my father's house that I said to her, this is your kindness that you should do for me in every place. Wherever we go, say of me, he is my brother. The Amalek took sheep, oxen, and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham. And he restored Sarah, his wife, to him. And Amalek said, see, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Then to Sarah, he said, Behold, I have given you, your brother, a thousand pieces of silver, and indeed this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. Thus she was rebuked. So Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Amalek, his wife and his female servants. Then they bore children, for the Lord had closed up all the wombs of the house Amalek because of Sarah, Abram's wife. This is Genesis 12, verses 8 through 18. And we can get into the heart of the lesson. Kingdom men must learn that God's guidance must be sought in making difficult decisions. Kingdom men must learn that God's guidance must be sought in making difficult decisions. As we look at our introduction, uh, we look at Abraham's journey to Gerar, a south country where he is entranced, is entertained by a local king named Amalek. Out of concern for his own well-being, Abraham said of his wife, Sarah, she is my sister. 
Assuming she was available and unattached, Amalek fell for Sarah and took her to be his wife. But God came to Amalek in a dream, telling him, you are good as dead. The woman you took is a married woman. Verses 3. This shocks, Amalek. this shocks Amalek, who had no intention of taking another man's wife. The Bible tells us that Amalek had not yet slept with her, had not so much as touched her, he said. Master, would you kill an innocent man? Didn't he tell me she's my sister? And didn't she herself say, he's my brother? I had no idea I was doing anything wrong when I did this. Verses four and five. This story provides a great lesson for the men of God today on how bad decisions can, ne can negatively impact the family. Um, and these are verses before the text that I read, kind of letting us uh, see the story and where we're at. Uh, Abraham has uh, once again uh, Introduce Sarah as his sister instead of his wife, and he and he lets us know it's because he didn't he didn't believe that the fear of God was in the place that he was approaching. Uh, this king named Amalek, uh, so Amalek is not the proper name uh, uh, for this gentleman, but it's the king name for uh, the kings that were in Philistine at that time. Uh, so. Abraham wanted to present her as uh, his sister in fear of losing his life. Uh, so that's that's just a bad uh, decision. He didn't he didn't seek God uh, if before making this a bad family decision. Uh, he should have sought God. God had already uh, put a blessing on Abraham where no one was going to be able to touch him. But his weakness um, was, was just too much for him to, to handle in these situations. Uh, Abraham, weakness presents his fear, uh, replaced his faith as Abraham. Again, he lied about Sarah. He told the same lie back in chapter 12 when he was in Egypt and came uh, confronted with Pharaoh, the king there in Egypt. Um, but I like uh, Amalek's response when he goes to God and said, Master, would you kill an innocent man? Uh, Amalek was innocent. Uh, and then he repeated the words that Abraham and Sarah had said to him. Uh, this is so, so important, brothers, that we do not um, make these bad decisions about these difficult family decisions, uh, but we seek God's guidance. We seek God's, God's guidance, and he will protect us. If he's already sent us, he's going to be with us, and he's going to help us on the journey. But this is just, Abraham is not a perfect man, but this is just one of those mistakes that he makes. And just like we're living today, we can relate to that. Uh, one of those mistakes that we make, but we can learn now that if we're on this journey with God, that we don't need to make these bad family decisions. Um, we can be honest and truthful, and God will protect us and keep us. Um, and that's our introduction as we get into the lesson now. We, we find that our first point is kingdom men must know that even saved believers can fall into sin. Even saved believers can fall into sin. We're looking at verses 8 through 10. Um, Amalek confronted Abraham and accuses Abraham of nearly making him commit a great sin. Verses 8 through 9. What have you done to us? What have I ever done to you that you would bring on me and my kingdom this huge offense? What you've done to me ought never to have been done. 
That's verses 8 and 9. Uh, we look at this and we say there's too many of us giving our marriages and our families away. All because of bad choices. Uh, the result of the choices we make with our time and our attention and our energy and effort have direct impact on our families. All the choices and all the decisions that we make have a direct impact on our families. Abraham put his family at risk. Thank goodness God stepped in. You know, have God stepped in on the bad decisions that you made? I know he has on my behalf, on my family's behalf. Uh, thank goodness God stepped in. What would have happened, you think, if the king had not heard from God concerning um, the taking of Abraham, the, the taking of Sarah, Abraham's wife? It, it, it would have been a mess. Uh, it would have been a big mess. But thank be unto God that God stepped in and spoke uh, to Amalek, the king. Months, uh, let's think about the day men give their families away in several different ways. Months without interaction, months without meaningful conversation, months without intimacy. By doing these things, by doing these things that ought never to have been done, Abraham literally put his family, his wife and his family at great risk to save his own neck. He gave his wife away in a like manner. Many kingdom men today are putting our spouses and our families at great risk. Perhaps we need an Abraham moment. Wherever Amalek looks him squarely in the eyes and says, what were you thinking when you did this thing? What were you thinking when you did this thing? Uh, brothers, we, we are saved believers, and we all can fall into sin. But one thing that we need to make sure that we keep uh, in our homes, in our lives, in our, especially in our family lives, are times where we can have family prayer. Uh, times when we can have family devotion. Uh, make sure now everyone seems to be um, misunderstanding now the purpose of the church, uh, the purpose of the local church. But the local church is still there, still a foundation that is good for families um, to go and serve and to worship and to praise God together. Uh, the local church is, is, is made up of healthy families. Uh, so we don't want to not put our families uh, joining the local church. We, we don't need to stop uh, coming to the church house. We, we want to continue to bring our families to the place of prayer, to the house of prayer, to the local church in our communities. Uh, we want to continue to study um, the word of God at our local churches. Um, as long as the word is the rightly being divided and we have a man of God in the house, your, your family is going to grow and be blessed. So, brothers, let's, let's not stop taking our wives, taking our family, leading them in the way uh, to the local church. Uh, serving, serving in ministry. Is still so important in your local church. Giving your gift and talents, what you've been blessed with, uh, to the local church. Not just living uh, as saved believers and doing nothing for Christ. Uh, we want to work in the house of the Lord. Uh, we want to continue to thank him for his many blessings, how he continues to protect us, how he continues to uh, uh, deliver us from our sins and our shortcomings and have us have a meaningful life uh, with our families. Uh, brothers, please continue to just work on and lead your families uh, in the way that God would be pleased with. Uh, 
look at point two. Kingdom men must not make excuses for our sin. Uh, verses 11 through 13. Kingdom men must not make excuses for our sin. Uh, Amalek is telling, uh, God came to Amalek in a dream. And he told him to give him his wife back. Uh, for us today, that can look like Give them their love back. Give them their trust back. Give them their desire back. Give them their family back. Give them their marriage back. Abraham comes up with so many excuses. He says he, didn't, he did it out of fear. And then he tries to convince Amalek that he really was in line. She is my half-sister. Uh, look at verses 12 and 13. Unfortunately, this wasn't the first time Abraham had done this uh, in Genesis 12 and 15. At this point, Amalek isn't responding to Abraham's excuses. God can and will turn anything and everything around that needs to be altered to get your marriage and your family back. A damaged marriage doesn't have to equate to a doomed marriage. A broken family doesn't have to equate to a busted family. God still has the ability to bind up the broken and turn hopeless situations around. God can step in and restore your relationship. God gives Amalek a command. Give him his wife back. Man, we, we can't continue to live where we can make excuses for our sin and think God doesn't know it. And you see the excuses that Abraham was making when he knew he had already lied. Um, and some might say, OK, well, I can understand he was in a, in a different place and he didn't think the fear of God was there. And he thought that if they wanted Sarah, they would kill him and take her. Uh, but he forgot about the protection and the provisions and the faithfulness of our God. And long as we have that, you don't need to fear no man. Uh, but there was a different time, and I can't make excuses for Abraham. The lesson is that we can't make excuses for our sin. We got to trust and depend on God, uh, and he will bring us through. Give him his wife back. Abraham, um, I know he felt a lot better after he heard this, after the king came to him and Sarah was given back to him. When you think about it, had that happened to you in your life? Have you gotten your wife back? Have you gotten your family back? And it wasn't all on your doing. If you... Uh, it's in the right relationship with God. You know he stepped in. He worked it out for you. And now you have your wife back. You have your family back. You have your hope back. You have your, your faith back. And things are beginning to look a little brighter for you. Is, isn't that the place you want to be in? You don't want to be in that dark place that God delivered you from. And now you're coming into this beautiful light. Brothers, there's... there's, there's, there's um, there's those that can, can help you with your, uh, your decisions. God has put people in your path and in your place that can assist you and help you through these tough and terrible times. Give him his wife back. Uh, like the commentary says, give him uh, his desire back. Give them their desire back. Give them their family back. Give them their trust back. All those things are so important uh, when we talk about family. Uh, when we talk about um, our spouse, our children, even our church, give us our church back. Uh, not the church house, the church, the fellowship of baptized believers. Give us that back where we can come and, and, and grow on the strength and the testimonies of those that's been saved. God is good. Um, let's not make excuses for our sin. We're um, 
coming up to our last and final point. Kingdom men must know that the best decision is to consult God before making a family decision. Kingdom men must know that the best decision is to consult God before making a family decision. Verses 14 through 18. Amalek and his servants understood the importance of obedience to God. Sarah was returned to Abram untouched. Abram should have consulted God before making the misrepresentation to Amalek. God can heal the hurtful words that were spoken in anger and bring health back to your family. The story reveals God's level of commitment to our marriage and the family. Kingdom men must know that God can protect your family, can protect your marriage, even in the middle of bad choices. But it is the best that we consult him before making the choices. God can bless your family right in the middle of a bad decision and give your relationship back. The story ends with them settling the score. Abraham, Amalek bless Abraham and Sarah as they leave and God heals Amalek's household. You, 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 you read the scripture and you know how it goes. Um, Abraham is the father of faith. And when Abraham sets out to a land that God will show him, he tells whoever blesses you, I will bless. And whoever curses you, I will curse. Now, with that type of blessing on your life, <laughs> how can you go wrong? You, you can still be that person of faith, just like Abraham. All, you just keep your trust in your hand in consulting God in all your ways, in all your decisions, and watch how God can bless you. And watch how God can curse those that curse you. Yeah, just, just look at it. Consult God before making any family decisions. And, and you remember um, when Abraham started out, God promised him, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And I will bless those who bless you and curse you who curse, who curse you. I will give this land for your offspring. I will give this land for your offspring. Don't you want to leave something for your offspring? When you, when you stay with God, when you can consult God on your decisions, you can, you can begin to know that he has promises for your offspring. <laughs> If you can stay faithful, understand that he can bless you and every, everyone around you. Those who are good and, and, and continue to be with you, he can bless as well. That's the kind of man that we want to be as we live in this here 21st century, in this here post-pandemic living, living, learning from Abraham's journey, knowing that he wasn't perfect. He made some bad decisions. But here's our, here's our thing, is that we need to consult God in all our decisions. Lead our family in a way that's going to be pleasing to God, and he will continue to bless us, continue to keep us, and continue to lead us in a mighty way. I pray that you've been blessed um, in our lessons this evening. Uh, brothers, I just want you to be encouraged and to know that this is our month. Let's continue to Sing, let's continue to shout, and let's continue to uh, thank God for everything that he's done and that he will do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for just another opportunity to hear your voice and to lead, be led by um, your love. Father, we want to be better men. Um, we want you to keep us in the midst of all of our decisions, um, Father, we want to have a heart that seeks after you, one that will not um, turn to the left or the right, but stay dead in the middle on the center of your love. Help us now and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen.